What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codeby.com and in this video, I wanna talk about strings in Python. All right guys, in the last video, we talked about journaling with Python. In this video, I want to sort of expand upon strings, tell you some more stuff about them and uh, play around with them in different ways. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses and hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so a few videos ago, we talked about data types. We listed, you know, several of the main ones. From, the, from now in the next few videos, I want to take a few minutes and just sort of explore each of them in more detail because we went over them very, very quickly. Now, strings, you may think there's not a whole lot going on with strings, but in fact, there's all kinds of things you can do. And we start out, let's just go greetings. And normally we, I've mentioned you can do single quotation marks or double quotation marks. And here I have double quotation marks. Uh, these are single quotation marks. And I mentioned there are times when you might want to use one or the other. And Let's just give you an example here. We could go, my boss yelled, quote, get back to work, quote, all right? So let's say you want to print out quotation marks onto the screen. In this case, we want this get back to work to be printed with quotation marks. Well, if we go print and then greetings and save this, pull up our terminal and run it, we get this huge error. So what's going on? Well, what happens when you create a string is you put your quotation marks in, this, the first quotation mark, and now the Python interpreter is reading to the right and it's looking for the next quotation mark to end the string, right? And here it gets to this quotation mark and it thinks, oh, that's the end of the string. Well, we've now got some stuff after that and the Python interpreter doesn't know what to make of that. It doesn't know what to do with it because it thinks my boss yelled is the entire string and that's all there is. So to get around this, you might wrap the entire thing in single quotes, right? So one there and one there. Now Python sees the single quote. It says, okay, this is a string and it starts reading to the right, looking for that next single quote. Well, it gets to right here. This is a double quote, so it ignores it because it's looking for a single quote. And then here at the end, it sees the single quote, and it goes, okay, the string is ended. So now if we save this, come back here and run this guy again, we get my boss shell, get back to work. And the get back to work is, uh, you know, has quotation marks around it just like we want. And so you could do the same thing in the opposite opposite way. You could wrap all these in a double quote and then like do a single quote around the thing you want to print out as a single quote. So if we save this and run it, same thing, only now we get single quotes around here. So that's cool. Another way you can do this, let's put this all back, is by using escape characters. And the Python escape character is the backwards slash. So what this does is it says, hey, escape out the very next character. And in this case, it's a quotation mark here and a quotation mark here. It's basically telling Python, don't treat this as a quotation mark, just ignore it. The next character, just ignore the next character. So here, if we save this and run it, we see my boss yell, get back to work in quotation marks just the way we want. So there's lots of different uh, escape characters. I'm not gonna go into all the escape characters, but uh, backslash N is a popular one. N stands for new line. Uh, we also need to escape out that guy again. So if we save this, what this will do is it'll print out a new line, as you can imagine. So now it says my boss yelled and then get back to work is on a new line. So that's sort of useful. So that is, quotation marks and what, you know, so now you know about single versus double quotation marks. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but something you should probably know. Um, now, I wanna talk about concatenating and concatenating is a fancy word for 
smooshing two things together, right? So we might say, um, hello, my name is, and then we might have, say, a variable called name and set this equal to John. Oops, lowercase j. Okay, so we might want to smush in this variable into this string. Well, if we just type it like this, it won't work. It'll just print out name. It won't print out the variable. So if we save this and run it, you know, it just says, hello, my name is name. And that's not what we want at all. We want it to print out the actual variable. So to do that, we can concatenate. And concatenating is done with a plus sign, right? So now we could just go name. And notice this is not in quotation marks because we want to treat it as a variable. So if we save this and run it, we get, hello, my name is John. So you'll use that a lot for a lot of things. Now, you can only do this with strings, right? Um, if name was a number, right, you can't really add a string and a number because they're two different data types. That's like saying, I want to add two plus pizza. What's the answer? I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, what is two plus pizza? Here we're saying, hello, my name is plus 41. In this case, this is not really a concatenator. This is a plus sign. You know, plus means add. So we're adding strings together. That makes sense. But you wouldn't add a string and a number. So if we save this, actually, it's been a while since I've done this. I'm not sure what's going to happen. We get an error. It just goes, oh, I don't know what to do. You're trying to see And it's saying what the error is right here. It must be a string, not an integer. Integer is a fancy way of saying number, whole number. So keep that in mind. That's sort of uh, kind of interesting. Next, I want to talk about some functions that you can run on strings. So let's change this to uh, John Elder. Now, there's all kinds of cool functions you can do. Object, uh, Python is an object-oriented programming language. It means you can do objecty things to things. And, and a string is an object. So you can do stringy things to things. Well, what are stringy things? Well, we can change the case, uppercase, lowercase, you know, all, all uppercase, all lowercase, titleize it, capitalize it. We could do all kinds of stringy things like that. To do that, we call several different functions. So one of them is the upper function. And to call these things, we just slap a period on the end of our variable, on the end of our string, and then just type upper, and then it's a function, so you call the little function parentheses. So if we save this and run it, let's see what this does. You can see every single letter is now uppercase, right? It's like you're yelling, hello, my name is John Elder, right? <laughs> Annoying, but you might want to do that for some reason. You can also do lower. So any ideas <laughs> what this is going to do? Save this and run it. Now everything is lowercase. You can see here we have an uppercase J, an uppercase E, an uppercase H. It takes all of those lower. So that's kind of interesting. You can do capitalize. And here I'm going to change this to a lowercase H and hello. So save this, run it. We can see now it's capitalized the very first letter in the string. Eh, that may be useful. It may not. Instead, we can also do title, right? So if we go title, I believe that will uppercase the first letter. Yeah, it uppercases the first letter of every single word in your string. So the I, the N, the M, and the H are all uppercase now. That's cool. Um, we can do something called swap case. And this will just make everything opposite of what it is. So if it was uppercase, it'll switch it to lowercase. If it was lowercase, it'll switch it to uppercase. Kind of fun. Let's run this and see. So you can see all of these are uppercase, and then the J and the E are lowercase. Because that's the opposite of all of those things. So uh, pretty cool. Um, there's lots of little functions like that. Those are the main ones you're going to see. Now, finally, we can also do some sort of logical stuff. We can figure out uh, what's the length of the string. And to do that, we call the len function. And then inside of there, 
uh, we put our, our variable. So if we save this and run it, oops, what have I done? Uh, there's a error somewhere. Print len green, oh, we lost a parentheses. There we go. Okay, so save this, come back here, run it, we get 28. Well, what is 28 exactly? Well, that if you add every single character, so the H is one, the E is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There's 28 characters in this string. So the length of the string is 28. And you think, why in the world would I ever want to know that? Oh, there's lots of reasons why you might want to know that. You can even then, let's say, we can call out specific things from our string. So let's see. We could go greetings. And then remember when we call the list, we use these square brackets. And to call an item in the list, which are numbered, we call the number of the item. So here, let's go 14. That's going to return the 14th thing in our string. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If, we, if it works right, it should return an E. So if we save this, come over here and run it again, Ooh, we get absolutely nothing. Did I not save it? Print greetings, 14. Save this, run it again. Hmm, still nothing. Oh, did I miscount maybe? Uh, let's try 13. Oh, I know what it is. Just like with lists, it doesn't start at one, it starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 will be E. <laughs> I always forget that even with lists, I forget that they start at zero and we get E. So you think, why would you wanna do that? Oh, lots of different reasons. Uh, we can do ranges. So let's go, we, let's say we just wanted to return John. So this was the 13th, 14, 15, 16, 17. We want the 18th, 19, 20, 21, 18 through 21, I think. So we can go 18 through 21, and hopefully that will return, if my math is right, my adding, which probably isn't because I'm terrible at <laughs> adding, jaw. Okay, so we actually want through 22. Save this, run it, boom, John. Kind of interesting, right? There are reasons why you might want to do that. And we can also kind of uh, split this thing up. So let's go greetings dot split. And then we want to split it by, let's put a zero or a uh, space. So I'm going to take out this just so it doesn't confuse us here. Now, let's say we want to save this, print it. So I'm just going to, there we go. So this will split out everything in our string by the space and it'll return it like a list, like a Python list. So if we save this, I know we haven't really talked about lists yet, but we've seen them. So you can see this looks like a list and each item is now separated into its own item of the, of the list based on that space. We split it by space. Why do we care about that? Well, we can now access each of those things and do stuff to them. So if we wanted to you know, print out elder, that is the zero, one, two, three, four, fifth thing in our list. So then we could just slap this guy on here and call five. If we save this and run it, boom, it prints out elder, which it's pretty cool. We can also now sort of, I think we can run a range. So we can go four to five. If we save this, hopefully it'll say John Elder. Oh, just says John. We need four to six. John Elder, very cool. Now it's a it's another list that we can access if we wanted to. So 
all kinds of weird stuff you can do with strings. You can split them. You can find the length. You could put print out ranges. You could uppercase. You can lowercase. You can concatenate. You can use single quotes, double quotes, all the things. Uh, so, and, and you're going to use all these things in your programming careers because strings are something you work with all day, every day. Everything's a string basically in Python for the most part. So very cool. So in the next few videos, like I said, we're going to go over each of these other ones in greater details, numbers, lists, tuples, dictionaries, and booleans. Probably won't spend a whole lot of time on booleans because there's not much to know about those. They're just true or false, uh, but that's eh, pretty cool. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you again in the next video.